Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. During the question and answer session, you may press star, then one, from your touchtone telephone. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Dan Rutherford. Sir, you may begin. Thank you, Tony. Hello, and welcome to our financial education webinar series for library staff. I'm Dan Rutherford. And I'm Dave Siminski. Uh, and we're with the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau Offices of Financial Education and Financial Empowerment. Today's webinar is part of an ongoing educational series to help library staff build knowledge and become more comfortable helping patrons. Today's webinar will focus on saving at tax time. This will be an interactive webinar with plenty of time for questions and answers. We will open up the phone lines when we are ready to hold discussions and take questions. When speaking, please be courteous to others and keep your questions and comments on point and brief so we can include as many people as possible. Also, provide your name and affiliation so we know who we're talking to and where you're from. We are recording this webinar, so your questions and comments will be recorded, too. It generally takes us a few weeks for us to review and post these recordings, so we ask that you please be patient. We will post the video in the library resources section of our website. The web address is on the screen. On that page, you'll also see our, our list of upcoming webinar topics. We plan to hold these webinars on a monthly basis, and the format should be fairly consistent with today's presentation. So if you haven't already done so, please send your contact information to financialeducation at cfpb.gov and ask to be added to our email list. If you, add your library, if you add library webinars or something similar to the subject line, we'll make sure to include you in future updates and announcements. This is the fifth in our webinar series. Last month, we talked about dealing with debt and debt reduction. We are going uh, to take the, the month of December off due to the holidays and pick up again in the new year with understanding credit reports and scores. Again, we want to make this as interactive as possible, so we will stop and have discussions and take questions along the way. But you can also ask questions using the Q&A window on your screen. Simply click the Q&A button and type in your question. Then click Ask. The question will appear on our screens, and we will respond either on the spot or during the Q&A sessions. So before we get started, here is uh, this month's project update. And this month, I really wanted to highlight the tremendous growth that we're seeing in the program. So here are some of our top-line stats. Uh, so far, we've signed up, uh, or 336 libraries have said that they were interested in participating in the project. Um, and, you know, when we started back in uh, July of this year, uh, we really only had nine libraries who were participating in our pilot efforts and, and helping us develop the program. So to go from nine to 336, we think, is, is a really tremendous uh, victory, and we, we really owe it all, all to those of you who are interested in providing more financial education in your libraries. Uh, of those 336 libraries, that... Uh, the, uh, that represents, I guess, a, a total branch network of 1,574 branches. Um, so we really are, are getting some good penetration. Uh, and that also is spread across 47 states. So, uh, you know, in a very short order, we've pretty much gone coast to coast. Um, another important uh, number that I like to talk about is the fact that since we launched the, the website in July, uh, we've just delivered uh, more than 330,000 publications, um, and those are bulk ordered uh, and delivered for free directly to your library. If you're interested and you haven't ordered from us yet, uh, you can do so using that link, promotions.usa.gov slash cfpblibraries.html. And to see everything that we're offering, our electronic resources, free publications, marketing materials, and more, you can visit consumerfinance.gov slash library resources. So thank you to all of those who have signed up and are offering more financial education in your libraries or offering financial education for the first time. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Dave uh, to talk about saving at tax time. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I'm particularly pleased to uh, be here talking to uh, folks associated with libraries today uh, because uh, libraries have a have a long history uh, in helping people uh, prepare their taxes. 
as far back as I can remember, libraries have always been a place where you could go pick up your paper, paper tax forms and uh, get information, basic information about taxes. And then, of course, as libraries uh, evolved and started incorporating computer centers and there was uh, more and more online tax preparation software available, people would come into libraries and still do come into libraries to prepare their taxes. And of course, libraries also have been long time, uh, for a long time have been associated with uh, the AARP, and many libraries host AARP tax sites uh, that, per, you know, that help uh, older people prepare their taxes and oftentimes community members. And then finally, uh, probably over the past 10 years, they've become more closely associated with community VITA campaigns, uh, where community uh, volunteers would come in and prepare taxes for a lot of folks in the community. For example, in Seattle, where I came from, uh, we, uh, we uh, partnered with our local library there in 2005, I believe we started. And every year, uh, year on year, we prepare uh, the that tax preparation campaign in Seattle prepares over 4,000 tax returns at their local library. So a little bit about why the CFPB is engaged with uh, tax time savings. Uh, it actually says in our enabling legislation that uh, we have a mandate to encourage wealth building and financial services during the preparation process to claim the earned income tax credit and federal benefits. Uh, and so we've interpreted that and, and as being, uh, being re really present and active in helping people save during, uh, during tax time. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the Earned Income Tax Credit, or EITC, it's a benefit for working people who have low to moderate incomes. Uh, for example, people can get the EITC up to about $52,000 uh, in income per year, although the largest EITC benefits typically go to uh, families with children that have incomes between ten and $20,000. And, $20, and uh, EITC refunds can be uh, – several thousand dollars for some of those uh, families to get that, or that are eligible for the highest uh, credits. Um, also, it's a refundable tax credit, which means that it is added on to any other refund that you might already be eligible for. And in the case of people that actually owe taxes, it can reduce the amount of taxes you owe. A little bit of uh, tax time basics. And these, uh, these numbers are from uh, 2012 tax year, so the year before last. Uh, about 131 million people file returns every year in this country. 84 million of those um, are people with are households with incomes less than $50,000 uh, a year. Of those, 26.2 million receive, receive the earned income tax credit. And there's a variety of reasons why that the difference is so much. Uh, mostly, it has to do with uh, filing status and the fact that as people, especially people with smaller families or single filers they actually, uh, uh, their income raises above the level where they'd actually be eligible. 82 uh, million people use direct deposit, meaning that they file their return electronically and they get direct deposit right into their bank account. And about 3.2 million returns are filed using volunteer income tax assistance programs, and I'll say more about that uh, in a few minutes. Of all those people, only 1.5 percent um, split and save a portion of their refund that we can track, and less than 1% purchase savings bonds, which is something you can do right through the tax return. So um, there's a lot of research in this space uh, and about the barriers to saving at tax time, even though we think it's a, a great idea and uh, a lot of people really want to save. Uh, and some of them are that taxpayers have already, in many cases, especially lower, lower income tax filers that, don't, that are living on the financial edge, have already sort of pre-spent their refund before they before they even have it. Uh, that means that they may be planning to get that refund in order to expenses that the, that they've accrued over the year, or maybe major purchases that they've been waiting to make until they get their tax refund. Uh, so when they get to the tax, when they get ready to file their tax return, they've already sort of earmarked all those funds. Also, tax volunteers or staff at tax uh, at tax companies like H and R Block and others are not having the conversation with those taxpayers about, uh, about saving. Uh, and oftentimes if people don't, uh, aren't asked and aren't aware that they can save at tax time and how easy it is, then they may, they may not follow through. Other, other logistical challenges are that taxpayers sometimes they come to the tax site, they want to save, but they don't have their account information. 
And if they don't have their account information to fill into the tax uh, tax form, then they're less likely to save. Um, also, some, some people don't have a bank account or any other savings vehicle, so there's no place for them to save. And then finally, there are at least some people who are especially uh, benefit recipients, public benefit recipients, uh, who are worried that if they save too much that it will affect their eligibility for their benefits. So why is savings, uh, saving a tax time important for people with, especially with people with lower incomes? It could be important for everybody, but especially for people with lower incomes. Uh, first of all, in many cases, especially people that are getting the earned income tax credit and an additional refund, uh, this may be the single biggest check that they receive all year. It's bigger than any single paycheck that they have. So it's a, it's an, in, it's a moment in time when they have an opportunity to make a savings decision. Uh, second, building savings can insulate uh, families, especially families that don't have a lot of other resources, against economic shocks that happen throughout the year. There's a lot of research that's been done that shows that even $500 or $1,000, having that in the bank, as a reserve in case your car breaks down or you lose a couple days of pay can really help to offset uh, the kinds of shocks that could occur if you literally are out of money when something like that happens. And then finally, savings while you're, saving while you're filing your return can be really easy and automatic. Uh, there's a variety of ways that I'll talk about in a few minutes that you can actually save while you're filing your tax return. So, at CFPB, some of the things we talk about uh, are, you know, first of all, it's important, regardless of what happens, that people make the most of their tax refund, and they can do that in a couple of ways. First of all, if, you're, if people are confident in filing their own returns and preparing them, they can go online. Uh, they can go to any one of the major tax, tax uh, companies like H&R Block or Jackson Hewitt, or they can go right to the IRS to the link that you see on your screen, and they can find uh, online tax preparation software that they can use and file their return for free if their income is less than $58,000 a year. So it's a free, free resource. Second, if they're not confident in filing their returns, and a lot of people are not, uh, the majority of people, even lower income filers, still go to pay preparers to get their returns done. But if they're not file, uh, confident in filing their returns, they can also get their returns done for free by going to the uh, website you see uh, again on your screen. Uh, and the IRS has a locator page where you can put in your zip code, uh, zip code and it will direct you to the local free tax sites in your community. And third, it's important for people to make sure that they, when they're filing a return, either themselves or having somebody help them, that they're claiming all the tax credits for which they're eligible. Certainly the EITC is one, but there are others like the child t tax credit, sometimes energy credits and others uh, that they want to make sure that they take advantage of if they're eligible. And, and there's a link on your screen to see uh, about uh, how you find out whether you're EITC eligible. So uh, some other ways you can make sure to make the most of your refund is to use direct deposit for speedier refund. If you do use direct deposit when you're filing a return, you're likely to get your refund deposited into your account in 10 to 15 days. Otherwise, if you're filing a return and mailing it in paper, uh, it may take four to six weeks. So it's really a difference, and for a lot of families, this is, that time makes a lot of difference. And then, of course, there's options to save a portion of your refund, as I said, through the return itself. You can use direct deposit into savings, you can split your refund in up to three separate accounts through a form called 8888, which uh, not everybody knows the form number, but if you're using tax preparation software, it doesn't matter. It directs you right to that form. And then, of course, you can write through the tax form. You can also buy savings bonds, and a lot of people like to do that because they pay a little bit of interest and they provide a little bit of long-term savings uh, that they can oftentimes save not only for themselves for their fam but for their family. One of the things that we like to remind folks about, and I'm sure you, uh, many of you have seen these kinds of checklists before, the IRS has them and others provide them, but it's making sure that when folks come to get their ta or go or are going to get their taxes done, either at a paid preparer or, or hopefully at a volunteer site, that they bring all the necessary information. Some of it is pretty obvious, their photo ID, their social security numbers or, or ITIN, their tax ID numbers for all their family members, all the various tax forms, uh, bringing last year's tax, state and federal tax returns is, is always helpful. It's not mandatory, but it's really, really helpful for the tax preparer. And then and this year, something to make sure that you're, you're telling folks about is to make sure that they bring 
their, their tax-related documents, such as their 1095 A, B, or C, which is the form that people are now starting going to start receiving this year if they signed up for health care through the, uh, one of the health care exchanges. And so that's, that's something to be aware of because it's a brand new form. And then, of course, it's important to br for them to bring all their banking account information. So if they have an account and they can bring a voided check or savings account number or deposit slip, then it makes it easier for whoever's assisting them to make a direct deposit into their account. And then finally, if they're filing, if, if folks are filing jointly with their spouse, uh, they need to make sure that both people come to wherever they're going to get help for their tax preparation because both people have to sign the return. So a little bit about uh, a little about uh, a little bit about EIT, or excuse me, CFPB's work in in uh, promoting saving a tax time, and we call our campaign uh, to promote saving a tax time Ready Set Save. So the purpose of Ready Set Save is to provide opportunities for low income and economically vulnerable taxpayers to save a portion of their tax refund, which we think will help them increase their financial st stability and also their financial capability. And what we're trying to achieve is, first of all, you know, through our Ready, Set, Save campaign is to increase the capability of nonprofits and businesses that are offering uh, savings opportunities and tax preparation opportunities to their tax customers to in empower them to be better ready to help their tax customers save. Uh, also, or, you know, one of our goals is to make sure that, that the taxpayers are aware of all the saving options that they have. We, our goal is to try to increase the rate and amount of savings at tax time by consumers that are receiving a refund. And then, of course, we want to increase awareness about the CFPB as a resource for consumers to take control of their financial lives. So we've actually been doing Ready, Set, Save for three years now, basically since, uh, since the CFPB started. And, uh, and we started very small because it was the first year. And then uh, in the first couple of years, we did, ran small pilots with a few communities to test different ways of promoting saving at tax time. And then last year, in 2014, we actually fielded a 13-city tax time savings pilot. We developed training manuals for volunteer tax preparers and staff to help them with savings promotion because it's a little bit difficult to engage people around saving because primarily the folks are there to get their returns done and prepared, and of course, whether they're tax volunteers or even tax pros at some of the commercial tax sites, they're very focused on making sure the returns are prepared accurately. And so adding an additional, adding a piece of conversation around saving is something that you actually need to help people to do. How do you start that conversation? How do you, how do you actually ask people if they're interested in saving while they're, while they're getting their returns prepared? So for this pilot, we developed those training manuals and information, and we also did some webinars for some of those volunteers. We provided training to 52 trainers that, in turn, uh, trained approximately 1,800 volunteers. Uh, we developed uh, a lot of information for, pilot, for the pilot sites, uh, consumer information that they could, you know, posters they could hang up at their sites uh, that promoted savings, a variety of other collateral materials that were, you know, of use to them. We also produced a couple of short videos promoting various ways to save at tax time that tax campaign, tax campaign sites were able to show in their, in their site if they had a TV or a computer to show them on that sort of helped to reinforce the message. So what we learned last year were a couple of things. So here are the numbers. We actually, the, uh, where we provided, where we provided the training to those pilot sites, about 48,000 tax taxpayers uh, had their returns prepared where the training was, was used, and about 39,000 of those taxpayers received a refund. And the numbers that we're really interested in is how many people actually saved. And you can see the numbers, you know, 1,127 uh, split their refunds and put a portion of their savings, uh, uh, put a portion of their refund into savings, and that's 3.1% of the total, and then uh, just under 2% bought U.S. savings bonds. And those numbers may seem kind of low, but actually uh, those numbers are about twice the national average for people that uh, are saving their refunded tax time. So it can tell you that there's at least a little bit of a nudge that occurred uh, in our pilot last year. Next slide. Some of the other things that we learned, uh, which are actually even more interesting than the, than the raw numbers, is 
wh wh which of those sites of the 13 pilot sites were most effective and what were their characteristics? And, and what we learned is that consumers are more likely to follow through and save if they're engaged multiple times. It's like anything else where you, if you haven't been thinking about and planning for something, it takes a couple of times of being reminded that something is possible before you're likely to make the decision to follow through. So that a little bit they have to be sold on the concept. And by selling, I don't mean hard sell, but just reminded, savings is a possibility. It has some benefits. Here's easy ways you can save, and we're here to help you follow through. And then uh, some of the really successful sites had actually dedicated savings staff that would engage tax customers um, you know, either before they went to start, you know, start having their return prepared and even afterwards, uh, because as I said before, the, the tax professionals or the tax volunteers are really focused on preparing the return. So building that into their, to the conversation they have with tax customers sometimes can be, um, sometimes can be an additional challenge that they, they can't follow through in all the time. So we, uh, we found that incentives, there were various tax campaigns we worked with where they provided very small incentives to encourage people to save, like $20 gift cards and things like that. And where those incentives were provided, people were more likely to save. And if they saved, they didn't save just a minimum amount. Sometimes they'd save several hundred dollars. Uh, so just a little bit of a, an incentive sometimes can have a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of benefit. And then providing information and prompts in advance may increase savings activity. So if people are reminded before they come to the tax site that saving is a possibility and making sure they bring all their information, that sometimes helps. And that's a really important point, Dave, especially since a lot of the libraries out there uh, are probably vital locations themselves or, you know, offer uh, tax time savings opportunities. So what sorts of information should they be putting out now to get people thinking about savings at tax time uh, in, come January? So we're going to have some information, and I'll, I'll talk about this a little more at the end, but we'll actually have some, um, some things like checklists and little budget worksheets that you could put out in advance of tax season, and we'll have them available sometime in early December, and we'll make sure that we let all of you know that those are available, and you can actually put them out on your shelves in advance of tax season. And those will be prompts that you could use that people can walk away with. It will be reminders. And then you can use them as tools, as talking tools yourself if you want to talk to, talk to your library customers about, about the possibility of saving. Okay, great. And then finally, uh, one of the last things I think we learned from, uh, from the pilot last year was that, especially in, in, within uh, tax sites where people are actually getting help uh, with their tax preparation, sometimes celebrating successes helps. People like to like to know when they've done something that's good, that good for themselves, and they like to share that information with others. So we actually had some of our tax campaign sites that actually had posters and they'd ring a bell if somebody saved, doing little things like that that, that uh, really sort of celebrate the fact that people have followed through and saved. So we tried to learn from, from each of each successive year about, about what was effective uh, in promoting saving um, at, at tax time. And so what we're going to do this year is we're going to expand the availability of our volunteer training and tools so that they're widely available across all the, all the volunteer income ta uh, tax assistance campaigns across the country, and we'll be communicating with that entire network to let them know it's available. Um, it will broadly publicize through all the networks and social media the fact that, that, that we're providing these trainings and this informational materials so more tax volunteers are prepared to have that savings conversation with their tax customers. Uh, we'll make all our materials available and that for download via the CFPB website, and that includes the, the informational sheets that, that I referred to previously that you can actually put out on your shelf prior to tax season. We'll provide several training webinars that will be available to all. Any of you are welcome uh, as well, but, you know, we're, we're focusing primarily on volunteer income tax assistance sites um, that are actually going to be helping people with returns. That may include some of you. Um, and then we'll, pr we'll record those webinars so that they're available for people that couldn't attend at the time that we offered them. And then we'll be doing a variety of other promotional, uh, promotional options uh, to prepare to, to inform consumers about ways that they can make the most of their refund. And finally, a couple of things that aren't on this slide that I want to mention. We will be doing a small pilot 
uh, working probably with just a few sites, maybe a half a dozen to ten sites around the country, where we're partnering with AmeriCorps volunteers who are going to be stationed at those sites, and we'll be testing the idea of having a couple of those volunteers trained as saving specialists to follow through on what we learned from last year, that if you have dedicated staff in the tax site that aren't tax preparers that can engage with customers during the preparation or prior to the preparation of the return, then it might help them with following through and saving. Some of the uh, some of the tools that we have avail available, the one on your left that says start a better tomorrow today and looks like a checklist. I know you can't read it from here, but essentially that's a little planning checklist, and it will be one of the items that you'll be able to put out on your shelves early that will get people thinking about the things that they want to save for. Uh, we also have another little budget sheet. I don't have a picture of it here, but it's a budget where they can actually make decisions. I want to save for a certain goal, and they can fill in whatever the goal is. And they can, it has a little budgetary uh, checklist where they can say, I want to set them, out, um, set them out aside for housing and other necessities, and then it leaves them an option to where they want to save or the purpose they, for the purpose they want to save. We'll also have things like posters that you can put up at the libraries. You can put them up at, uh, at certainly at any VITA sites. That's what they're primarily intended for. Uh, the third piece you see there is our instructor's guide, which will be really, it'll be a single guide this year, which will be a, a, a booklet that any volunteer or instructor can use that will give them some tips and tricks about encouraging saving a tax time. And then finally, the, the last piece you see to the far right is uh, indicative of all of our materials, which will be produced in, in Spanish as well. So we'll have them available both English and Spanish. So finally, um, if you have any questions, certainly you can contact me here, but I think we're going to have some question and answer right now for anybody, anybody that wants to ask questions right at, right at this moment. Yeah, Tony, why don't you go ahead and see if we have any questions uh, on the line or if folks are ready to uh, have a question or two. Now is your opportunity. Absolutely. We'll now begin the question and answer portion. If you'd like to ask a question, just press star, then one from your touchtone telephone. Remember to make sure your phone is unmuted and record your name clearly when prompted. One moment for our first question. Our first question comes from Linda Caruso. Your line is open. I'm sorry. I pressed that by mistake. Uh. I apologize. No problem. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, just press star, then one from your touchstone telephone. Well, Dave. Uh, and our first oh, question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Our first question comes from Michelle Gordon. Your line is open. Um, thank you. I was just wondering, how soon are the new materials going to be available for us to request? Materials, uh, we're, right now we're shooting for uh, all our materials to be available the first week of December. Um, we will send out a um, we'll send out a notice, and I'm sure we can send it to the entire library's network as soon as they're available or even to give you a heads up. And it will have links to where you can go download them uh, or order them off our, our, our procurement site. At that time when we, uh, by the way, at that time when we sent out the notice about the materials be being available, we'll also be sending out a, uh, a blast email that will let people know about the, uh, the, when our webinar trainings will be scheduled, so you can sign up for those as well. And again, if you'd like to ask a question, just press star, then one from your touchtone telephone. While we're waiting, um, Dave, why don't, uh, or could you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, a lot of the libraries are probably looking ahead to December, January, when they can, uh, what types of programs they should be thinking about in terms of financial education. Um, would something about, you know, finding these alternative places to do your taxes, I think most people naturally would, would go to the tax preparers they see on TV or or advertised in the newspaper, but may not necessarily know a lot about the AARP opportunities available to them or the VITA opportunities that are available in their communities. So can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, in, many, in many communities around the country, large and small, there are community VITA campaigns, there are AARP tax assistance centers, and I strongly encourage you, encourage you to, if you're not already connected to those campaigns in your, in your own community, then uh, there was one, uh, one uh, link to the IRS web, web page that I showed earlier 
in the presentation, which would be an easy way to find out uh, where sites are located. Uh, but I would also encourage you to, for example, reach out to your local United Way uh, or to other community-based organizations that might be engaged in, in tax preparation because I know if, if, if the library is not already connected to those campaigns that, that they'd be thrilled to have you as a partner and to help do outreach and to uh, promote materials. Uh, and as you see on the site, if you the second uh, bullet uh, where it says get free help filing your return, if you click on that bullet, it actually shows a list of tax sites uh, by zip code. And so from that, if you're not familiar with your local tax campaign, you can click there and put in your own zip code and then find out where the local tax campaign site is, and then you can uh, talk to them directly. Our next question comes from Arlene Weibel. Your line is open. Hi. You kind of partially answered this with the last question, but I was just um, trying to understand a little bit more about the types of organizations that are in the VITA uh, program in that network. Are they are they mostly charitable organizations, or what are the what is the variety of the different kinds of groups that are in that particular program? Well, it, it differ it differs in different communities. Although I would say the large majority of them are nonprofit organizations, um, and they may be a social service agency that's the uh, I, I think in each community it sort of starts organically, if you will, and some community-based organization uh, takes the lead. Sometimes it's the United Way, but sometimes it's other community-based organizations, and then they tend to build coalitions of, of other organizations that want to be either directly participatory and have a tax site in their building, or they just want to be able to refer uh, people to, their, to the tax uh, sites that exist. There are some cases, in some cases, there are actually uh, municipally organized campaigns. So in other words, city governments or in, case, in a few cases, county governments that have taken the lead and organized. And as a matter of fact, if you have specific questions and you can't easily find the, find the information on uh, the IRS website, you're welcome to contact me because I, I do have a list of uh, most of the community-based organizations around the country that, that, that organize VITA campaigns. Okay, thank you. you bet. Um, for the library's benefit, too, um, I know the IRS has put some effort into uh, providing uh, the free online applications that allow people to file their own taxes. And libraries have are a great resource in their communities for, uh, from, for free Internet access and for free uh, terminals uh, that, can, that patrons can use. So, um, can you describe a little bit about how what the IRS is doing in that sort of directed uh, preparation space? Well, so there is the um, they have a, uh, IRS has a couple different programs. One I referred to early uh, early on, which is the the top bullet on your um, on your on the screen right now, where you can you can go onto the IRS website and if you have income, people have incomes under fifty eight thousand, they can go to any one of the links on that site that they'll see, and it actually is inclusive of all the major tax preparation software providers into a TurboTax, um, H&R Block, Jackson Hewitt, and others. And you can choose any one of them, and you can self-file for free uh, with the income below 58000 The IRS is also piloting uh, a, uh, and I think it's only in select communities, uh, sort of an assisted self-prep model. Uh, where people can submit their information and then actually get some referral assistance that won't be in person. But I don't think that's, that's nationally available. I think there's only, it's only being piloted in select communities. Right. Tony, do we have any more questions? Showing no further questions in queue, but if you'd like to ask a question, just press star, then one from your touchtone telephone. And I'm showing no questions. All right. Well, if there are no further questions, then we can wrap things up. Uh, Dave's contact information is, was there on uh, on the previous slide. There it is. Um, so if you want to reach out to him, if you have any more questions on this topic, also you can email us if you want to get more information about our uh, library's campaign project or want uh, or have suggestions. Like I've, I've said, this is in the past. This is 
an ongoing dialogue, and we're always welcome to suggestions or your program ideas and best practices that we can share with other libraries. And with that, we will say thank you and, uh, and sign off for now. Thank you. Thank you for your participation in today's call. You may now disconnect. We'll ask that the speaker stand by for post-conference.